Hey y'all, uh, I am Representative Erin Sweener, the incumbent representative for House District 45. Um, and you know, thank you so much for putting the heavy weight of this office directly upon me in that intro. Um, but, it, but it's true, one of the really critical things about the legislative seats um, in Texas and really every state is that they're generally responsible for drawing the district lines and everyone here today running is, is governed by, whether it's State Board of Education, Congress, or my own seat. And these state legislative races are especially critical in 2020, because in 2021, after the census, we will redraw all those lines. Right now, there is single party control of the state of Texas. One party holds the governorship, the, um, the Senate, and the House. And that means if we have current control, one party will draw all those lines. Historically, when one party draw all those, all, draws all those lines, they are not fair. They draw people out of our democracy. And that's something we can see right here in downtown San Marcos, where as you walk around the square, you change districts back and forth between 35 and 21 with almost every step you take and almost every time you cross the street. And those lines are drawn to try and make folks like you have your votes count less. So one of, to me, the most critical thing we can do in 2020 is for Democrats to take control of the Texas House so that we have mixed control of that redistricting process and have a shot at drawing lines that are fair for each and every Texan to make sure your voice counts and make sure that your elected representatives listen and are responsive to you. Now, all that said, I support an independent redistricting process where we take that power away from the legislators and give it to a nonpartisan commission. However, we don't have time to do that before 2021. So our best hope is to get that done and then for everyone to be afraid over who might be control, in control in 2030 um, and get that process fixed prior to then. And that's something I'll continue to fight for. Um, other issues, we, we have our hands in just about everything at the Texas legislature and I'm really guided by my values of um, inclusivity, common sense government and healthy communities. And that's what I think about whenever an issue comes before us. Um, public education is critical. We did allocate an additional $6 billion to our public schools last session, as well as $5.5 billion to slow down the growth of property taxes in communities like ours. And so we dramatically increased the state share of public education funding from 38% to 45%. However, when I was a public school kid in Texas, it was 60%. We still have work to do to make sure the state pays its fair share so that our children have a great education um, and so that you aren't squeezed in your property taxes and can afford to stay in our wonderful communities. Um, Health care is also a critical issue and it's one that I was really disappointed in this past session. Uh, one of the biggest thing we can do at the Texas legislature to make health care more affordable for everyone is to expand access to Medicaid. The federal government allocated funding for that in the Affordable Care Act in 2010. Texas has refused to take that expansion again and again and again. And right now we are leaving $6 billion a year on the table. And if we expanded Medicaid, we would cover another one and a half million people. Let's say you have insurance. What does that mean for you? That means that your insurance no longer has to cover all those uninsured people indirectly. Right now, if somebody without insurance walks into an emergency room, that emergency room is going to treat them. And that's the right thing. They should treat them. Uh, but then the hospital, the doctors, they all have to take that cost, that bill that's not getting paid, and pass those costs on to everyone else who can pay a bill. It is a major factor in the rising cost of health care. And right now in Texas, we have the highest uninsured rate in the nation. We have a simple solution to fix it, or to start to fix it, I should say. We can take one giant step in expanding Medicaid, and we need to do that. Unfortunately, we weren't even, even able to get legislation through um, to just expand the length of time postpartum women could be covered on Medicaid. That was legislation our Lieutenant Governor declared dead on arrival. Um, so that's something I'm gonna to continue to work on. My personal expertise and my passion issue is environment. In fact, I was pleased to just be named to the House Interim Committee on aggregate issues. Aggregates are concrete batch plants, quarries, anything that eventually becomes concrete or cement um, or road base. Um, and that's something where we've had issues with these facilities causing nuisance issues like noise, light, uh, and dust for their neighbors, uh, where there's questions about the efficacy of our clean air models, um, and also where there's questions about the reclamation of the site. So I'm really pleased to be on this interim committee, and I'm optimistic that we can come up with a solution um, 
that works for the aggregate industry but protects the needs of our communities at the same time. Uh, I'm also doing work to try and come up with climate legislation that we can pass through the legislature uh, when Democrats take the majority of the Texas House. Um, that's going to be one of my key projects in the interim that my, my staff and I are working on right now. We're also working to try and fix the compliance and enforcement process at Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Um, there have been multiple fires just in the past year at facilities that had a history of non-compliance with safety regulations and clean air regulations. That's an issue. TCEQ's fines are too low. TCEQ does not issue fines often enough. And what that means is that companies, instead of complying to avoid the negative consequence, just roll that cost of the fine into doing business. And we need to make sure we have an enforcement structure that works and creates a culture of compliance and safety instead. So that's another one of the critical issues I'm going to be working on. Uh, the last thing that I think is really critical for the Texas legislature to work on in general, um, and where unfortunately we have a history of doing a lot of damage, is defending the rights of each and every Texan. So I'm a founding member of the House LGBTQ Caucus. I'm one of five out members of that body. And um, we fought bad legislation. We're able to keep things off the floor that would have reversed non-discrimination ordinances that our local governments have put in place and fighting to protect our communities, fighting to make sure that we stop criminalizing LGBTQ youth, um, and fighting to make sure that every single Texan can participate in economic life and social life, have great access to housing, um, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. That's just one corner of folks' rights we have to work on, but you know this is time limited, so we won't go into everything we could be doing there. Um, so again, my name is Erin Zwiener. I am the incumbent representative for Texas House District 45, Hayes and Blanco Counties. You can learn more about me at www.erinforyall.com. If you are here tonight um, or if you are watching this video, it is on you to get involved in 2020 and come out and help us make the change we need to in the state. You can sign up to volunteer at my website. We can hook you up with block walking or phone banking. So thank you all so much.